Women Who Own It podcast spotlights women business owners who are pioneers in their field, setting trends, blazing trails, and creating game-changing innovations. Brought to you by WeBank, the largest certifier of women-owned businesses in the U.S. and a leading advocate for women business owners and entrepreneurs. And me, Allison Maslins. I've been a business owner for the last 35 years. I'm the Wall Street Journal best-selling author of the book, Scale or Fail. So join our bold community of women who built it, grew it, and own it. I'll see you on the show. Welcome to the Women Who Own It podcast. I am your host, Allison Maslin. I am a 10-time entrepreneur and founder of the Pinnacle Global Network, where we mentor business owners around the world. And the Women Who Own It podcast is brought to you by WeBank, who is the largest certifier of women business owners in the United States and such an incredible organization that I am honored to be a part of. They help so many women business owners really grow and scale their business. And the Women Who Own It podcast, we get to feature incredible women business owners that are out there making a difference and creating great success, changing lives. And I love learning from them and I know you will too. And so today I'm really excited to feature one of these amazing women. Her name is Gail Becker and she is the founder and CEO of Kali Power. Gail's career has spanned the media, politics, and business during which she has held executive roles at Warner Brothers, Edelman, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. But as a mom of two boys with celiac disease, Gail was not happy with what the industry was offering. So she left her corporate job in corporate America to, to do something about it. And she launched Collie Power in 2017, not very long ago. And uh, Collie Power has been recognized as the true disruptor of one of the grocery's most stagnant categories. We're going to learn all about how she did that. And Collie Power is now one of the fastest growing food brands with the number one better for you pizza. Better for you pizza. I hadn't heard that before, uh, but I love the sound of that. In the United States, and availability in over 25,000 stores nationwide. That is so incredible, Gail. <laughs> Thank you for being with, with oh me my gosh, today. Thank you, so Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I mean, what you have accomplished in a, you know, three years is, is not very long. Um, you started this business from nothing, no business experience. You recently hit, you know, over hundred million in sales. Um, and, you know, how did what you were going, you know, I want to little, hear a little bit about the backstory. How did you know what you were going through with your children? Did you have any idea that this would launch you on this kind of business path? No, not at all. Uh, um, I, the only thing that I, I would correct is I did have business experience because I worked in corporate America, but I never had any food experience. Basically, okay. my, my food experience was I cooked it, bought it, and ate it, which was probably, you know, um, for most people. And what happened was it, it was really three distinct events. One was I was becoming disenchanted with corporate life. I had sort of reached the top of uh, my firm. And to be honest with you, I didn't really like the view. Uh, the second thing that sort of happened was my, my, uh, my father passed away. And when he passed away, something inside me really changed. And I decided that I wanted to do something more meaningful with my life. And three, I stumbled across cauliflower crust pizzas on the internet. Didn't invent it by any stretch. Your listeners did. And uh, in fact, the day that I d decided to try it, there were 569,000 recipes online. So I picked one, I made it, it was okay. My boys asked if I would make it again. And I said, there is no way I'm making that thing again because it took 90 minutes after I got home from a full day of work. <laughs> but I said, I'll tell you what, I'll find it for you. I looked everywhere, I couldn't find it. 
So basically I put all of those three things in a blender. The fact that I was disenchanted with work, the fact that my father passed away and I knew I needed to change my life in some meaningful way. And three, this idea that, huh, I can't be alone in thinking that 90 minutes is too long to spend making something that is better for you and still tastes great. Put all that in a blender. And what I came out with was, I know, I'm going to leave my job and start a company called Collie Power. And that's what I did. Yeah. Wow. Isn't life <laughs> interesting how sure a, is. Recipe, you know, a recipe <laughs> uh, will lead you to, you know, a, a whole different Who path. would have thought? Who would have thought? Well, that, that's what I love. That's what I love about business. Mm -hmm. But what do you think is the key to uh, the success of Collie Power? I mean, taking off so quickly as it did. I would say uh, three reasons. One is um, timing. I think, you know, we we hit the, the market right. There was this real desire by people to create something out of nothing because the industry wasn't giving them what they wanted. So they were forced to create it themselves. So in terms of timing and this groundswell of what was happening online, I think we, we, we hit the timing pretty well. Uh, the other thing that I think one of the reasons is marketing. So I didn't know anything about food. Um, I did know a little something about marketing because that was my background. And it just really goes to show you that anyone who has a background in something can use that to build a business, even if it's not, you know, the core of the, of the business that you're, that you're trying to create. Um, and the third thing, um, quite frankly, is the product. I think just like in real estate where they always tell you location, 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 when it comes to food, it's always taste, taste, taste. And I think uh, one of the reason, one of the main reasons why Cauliflower has proven successful um, is that we have a great tasting product, but really it's all those three factors together. Yeah. Yeah. The timing, a great product and definitely the marketing. And I, I think that's so true. I'm so grateful because my first business was an, an advertising agency oh, and okay. I, I had no idea what I was doing mm -hmm. and I was, you know, pretty young back then. So, yeah. but having that to apply to every other business, I, yeah. I think so many business owners don't know marketing. And I think that is so critical that I'm sure that experience made a big difference for you. It did make a big difference. And, you know, you sort of, you know, lead with your strengths, but I think, the bigger lesson there is it'd be really easy for someone, myself included, to say, well, I don't know much about food. So probably the last thing I should do is to start a food company. But I think so many women come from so many different fields and maybe you bring marketing to the table. Maybe you bring finance expertise to the table. Maybe you bring sort of operational expertise to the table. Everybody has something. So even, so if your passion lies in another industry, another category, that's okay. Bring what you know, concentrate on that, and then hire other people around you to fill in the gaps. That is so smart. Focus on your strengths and then have, you know, other people that are experts in those areas exactly. support you. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. Great, great advice. So what were some of the uh, unforeseen challenges? <laughs> uh, and I'm sure there were, have been many. Um, How long know, is this podcast? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so all day, I know, or weeks. Exactly. Um, that you, what are some you've had to face in, in, you know, especially as you began to scale. Yeah. Well, look, I, I'd probably put them uh, in, in, in three buckets. One is, um, you know, money is really hard when you particularly a frozen food company. I mean, this, these weren't little bars that I was making that I could ship easily and what have you. This was frozen food that are it's very hard to make, very expensive to make. The cash flow was a big drain. So just trying to always stay ahead of, you know, making sure that you had enough cash to run the business, super challenging. The second thing I would say is just, um, you know, I entered a category where I knew nothing. So I would literally go to meetings and, you know, there's people that have been working in the food industry for so long. There's so many acronyms and so many buzzwords that they use. And I had no idea what any of them meant. Literally, I would go to meetings and I had no idea what transpired because they were speaking another language for all intents and purposes. Right. <laughs> so there's just that 
unfamiliarity with the business that, you know, with the industry that made it um, challenging, particularly early on. The third thing I would say are just the number of operational issues that are associated with manufacturing anything. So um, I'll give you a funny story if you want it. The, yeah, when I, my very first delivery to Whole Foods, this was, that's where we launched in 30 Whole Foods stores in February, 2017. And um, the very first order, the truck got stuck between two facilities. Both had already closed their gate and there was nowhere for here to go for, for him to go. And this is in the, this is in the middle of Illinois. If I didn't get that shipment to Whole Foods in time, they would have never ordered for me again. And the business would be kaput. And so literally my life was like stranded on an Illinois highway. And so, you know, just like, so I had to like stay up with the guy all night and like give him a bonus if he could keep the pizza safe and just the kind of things that you would do in a, you know, when anything is, is yours and you believe in it so much, but there's instances like that throughout the entire journey. Every day is a challenge. Yeah. I mean, those kinds of things that you could never, you know, never. anticipate. Uh, but, you know, we, we've all had those kinds of stories, but it, it really is like, you just do what it takes. Like, you, I'm going to exactly. stay up with the guy. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> right. I can't there. I you can do this. So. You can do this. Like, yeah, no, I always say like, I have three children. I have my two sons and I have Collie Power because, it's what keeps me up at night. It's what, you know, it's what you would just, you know, um, do so much for. Yeah. I'm sure so many that are listening to this right now can totally relate and are, are Absolutely. about those times. And then the cash flow situation, mm -hmm. um, that's a big one, you know, especially if you're okay. growing and you have a product and you're manufacturing and, you know, everything. And so, what are what's some advice you know around the cash flow that you would say for people listening i know you've had some investors along mm -hmm. the way what would you say to you know some business owners regarding regarding the cash piece what are some things you've learned well i you know for me for a business that uh you know was looking to scale the way that we were and particularly we were frozen food we just went through cash very quickly. So we had to take on investors, um, you know, and obviously I'm sure a lot of your listeners know that, you know, only 2% of VC dollars go to female founded businesses, which is a shame. Uh, so the whole dance about finding money and when to find money, I would say, you know, I think timing is a big thing when taking on investment. Um, you want to wait long enough so that, you know, you can, make the business grow as fast as you can before you take on that money. So it's, a, so it's sizable, but you can't wait too long that you are, you are starving the business from the fuel that it needs to grow. So the timing is a real dance and then finding the right partner, you know, it's, um, it's, it's tough. And there's a lot of people out there who won't see your vision or won't understand what you're trying to achieve, but, it only takes one. And, um, you know, you have to get along with them as well as they have to get along with you. And, um, you know, if you find the right partner, it can be really magical and, you know, just that much more people helping the business. So getting, taking on money is important. Taking on smart money to me is more important. I only took money from people who had an expertise of investing in food because uh, that's what I needed the most. So I think, where you get your money from is also really important. Yeah, I think that is such good advice because, you know, also with investors, you're giving a piece of your business. You need to have people that you know really care about the yeah. business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and who can bring something to it. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, I, I personally did not do a friends and family round because I just, it was hard for me to... I didn't want to, you know, play with my friends and family money. I it was too risky and I just couldn't sleep at night. Um, but getting money from investors who, you know, knew about food, not only did they bring a lot to the table, but it was very comforting. And it was a, a, a real confidence boost to think, huh, people who know something about food actually, you know, want to invest in Cauliflower. And that was, that, that was an exciting day. 
Yeah, great validation, obviously, yeah. that you were onto something. And then with scaling, what about the team component? Because, you know, from starting small and, and having a big enterprise, you're bringing on a lot more people. There's the dynamics of that. Were there any, you know, can you share some lessons through, through that process? Well, you know, look, there are people who joined the company very early on and that they joined a very different company than people joining today. So the people that, you know, join your team early on are, are really, you know, um, you know, are incredibly important because they saw the vision before the vision was even finalized, really. And, and that's lovely and, and, and that's irreplaceable. Um, but today, because we are the size that we are, it's great because we're able to attract the best and the brightest in the business. And uh, we have 50 people. Uh, now we're all working remotely, uh, which has its own challenges. Um, but it's actually going really well. And, um, you know, and people with expertise in, and who have spent many, many years working in food. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, that that is awesome and you know to have these people from the beginning and and to see the growth is really tremendous yeah um early, early on it was basically um it was myself and uh and this one woman that i hired very early on to help me and and then one sales guy and it was just the three of us for a while and um <laughs> i mean i laugh about these those days now but um at the time, it was incredibly hard, but yeah, it's still hard. But what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and so, um, what do you what do you think is? I mean, just touching on that, what do you think is the hardest part for you? What what has been the hardest part about business? Um, boy, I think that's such an interesting question. There's so many ways I could answer it. You know, I think the hardest part is that, you know, when it's your own business, you care so much. And sometimes it's hard to remember that other people don't care as much as you do. And I don't mean the team necessarily, but everybody in the business ecosystem, right? Everyone that you come into encounter with, you have to remember that you know, they care, they may care about Kali Power as a customer, but they don't care about it the way that this, we all do. Uh, and it's really important to keep that, that vision and that mission top of mind, because it's so easy, particularly when you're sharing freezer space with like these very large multinational corporations, it's really hard to you know put that put your mission and your goals front and center and nothing is going to stand in, in your way and if that means that you know you may not go this route or you have to tell these people no or what have you you know you got to be able to sleep at night and um you know sometimes just balancing all of that can be can be tricky yeah and the lack of sleep <laughs> Yeah. It's probably yeah. all together. <laughs> well, it's your baby, you know, it's your baby, you know, you got it's your boy. My baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing that because, you know, it is sometimes there is a very minimal separation between you, the business owner and and your business. And yeah. um, and that's and that can be unhealthy, you know. That yeah. can be really unhealthy. It's 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 sometimes it's really hard to know where one starts and the other one stops. Um, yeah. And how do you balance it? What do you, how, how do you take care of yourself through all of this? Um, how do I, that is a good question. Uh, I have a great team and, uh, team that I can rely on and that, you know, does an extraordinary amount. And, uh, so that's one, I rely a lot on my family, uh, that's always cheering me on, particularly my husband and my two boys, um, so, and, and really the extended village, you know, it's amazing when you start a business, 
I'm sure you went through this as well, but it's amazing when you start a business, how many people from the outside that you don't, maybe even don't know that well are sort of cheering you on and really like posting about your product and telling other people to buy it and people that you barely know. It's really extraordinary. And um, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to witness that. I'm incredibly grateful. Yeah, that is really such a blessing. And you know, what you're doing, you're really creating a community yeah. around around what you're doing, you know, almost like a movement, which is, you know, that's so exciting. It, it is. So how do you deal with, um, Gail, how do you deal with the rising competition in the in your specific niche, let's say, or in the health food market? Yeah. What do you do to stand out? Well, you know, uh, I have long believed that when you're running a race, when you look back, all you do is trip up. So we keep our eye forward. We don't, you know, we are obviously the number one cauliflower crust pizza in America. We're the number one gluten-free pizza in America. We're also the number one better for you pizza in America. So it's a wonderful privileged place to be. There are lots and lots of competitors and new ones come out every day, but we keep our, our eyes focused on our customers and um, our community and the people who are cheering us on and, and, and new customers who want to try our product every day. Um, that's what we keep our eye on. I'm not, we don't, we don't really obsess too much about what comp the competitors that come and go. Um, you know, when a, it's a big world. There's a lot of pizza out there. Um, yeah. People love pizza. There's enough for everybody. So. Yeah, you know what? That is such great advice. And I love that because it's a real abundant mindset, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I, I love that focus on your customers and, you know, on your vision. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're, if you're too focused on what others are doing, it just, it really just pulls you off your path. Exactly, exactly, totally. And I, I've seen it happen to smaller competitors who are focused on us. I, I've absolutely seen that happen. And it's almost, I just want to say, play your own game. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there are enough pizza lovers uh, out there. Enough pizza lovers for, for <laughs> all of us. Yeah. So, um, so business owners that are, you know, they're doing well, but they're like, you know, I, I'm ready to scale up to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you, would you give these business owners? You know, it's funny. When I started Kali Power, it's funny, I'm now about, you know, 12 feet away from the exact place I started it. So, you know, I have these great offices and all that. And now I'm back right where I started, you know, four years ago. <laughs> um, but uh, when I did start, so I spent, we launched in May of 2017. I left corporate America in Sorry, we launched in February 2017. I left corporate America in May of 2016. And for all of that time, I basically hunkered down in my home office and just built the company and didn't tell anyone what I was doing. And I didn't tell anyone what I was doing, you know, with the exception of my close family, but I didn't tell anyone what I was doing because I didn't really want to hear all the reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't or better not or, you know, what have you. I, it would be real. I mean, let's face it. Like, hi, I think I have a idea for a frozen food company. I'm going to put everything I have. And, you know, I mean, it sounds <laughs> smart now, but at the time it's pretty stupid. And I think I knew that inherently and I just didn't want to hear it. So, you know, obviously having your community and your village around you, super important, you know, surround yourself with people who are going to cheer you on. But also, you know, know that there are going to be people out there who are going to say, mm, you probably can't or you shouldn't. I wouldn't listen, to be honest with you. I think about what would have happened to me if I did listen. Yeah. And when I think about starting Collie Power, the thing that probably scares me the most is how close I came to not doing it. Literally woke up one morning and thought, should I? Shouldn't I? I mean, like this, raise your close. And that shouldn't have been. I should have, I should have, um, I should have bet on myself more easily. 
And so I encourage whoever's listening to tune out the noise and listen to what your heart and your head is telling you. Wow, that is such great advice because you're going to get the naysayers. I don't care. Oh my God, of course. You know, it, I get them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I know. I had so many people say, Who you are, you're going to fail, you know, and all of that. So, right. yeah, just put your head down and walk towards that dream. Exactly. You don't need it. Just turn out the clutter. Yeah. So um, that is determination. But I, I appreciate your, your, being vulnerable and saying, you know, that you did have those doubts, because I, I do think sometimes people question, you know, can I do this? And, um, and that's why I love you coming on here today, because what you've done, you really are showing other women that it is possible, you know, that you really can scale up this, you know, phenomenal enterprise that, that they can do it too. They can absolutely do it. And it's funny because um, if I, you know, it's starting a business is a, a bit like having kids. There's never the right time to do it. So what the heck are you waiting for? And I, if I have one regret, it's that I didn't do it sooner. I think about times that I spent, um, you know, unhappy in my job or in my career or in other parts of my life. And I, I'm, I'm mad at myself because I think, why didn't I do this sooner? And, you know, I, I still question myself every day. I still say to myself, what the hell did you do? <laughs> uh, but, um, but I've never looked back and I've never been happier. And I just encourage all of your listeners that might have a little bitty, you know, seed in the back of their head to, you know, nurture it and grow it. Because um, I think if the current environment teaches us anything, it's life is fragile. And what are we waiting for? Oh, my gosh. So true, right? And uh, it's never going to be the right time. And and we don't know. I mean, who, who knows what's coming down the pipe? So you got to create your own destiny. Exactly. And so for you, I mean, running, you know, let's say a $5 million company to a $100 million company is a very different enterprise. What was the shift you had to make internally, though? What, was there a shift for you to be thinking on that much higher level? Or did you just go, wow, it's growing. I didn't know it was going to get this big. Oh, you know, I, for, for, for a business like this, you have to make that decision pretty early on. So there are wonderful examples of companies that started because someone made, I'll, I'll, let's talk about food just in this case. So somebody who made some product, they sold it at the farmer's market, they gave it to their friends and family, they loved it, people started posting about it, they made more, they drove it around. Those are wonderful stories and there's a lot of fantastic food brands that started that way. This is not one of those. This is a story about, I thought, you know what? My dad was an entrepreneur. I thought I'm going to go big or go home. If I'm going to do this, I'm really going to do it. Hard to do something like frozen pizza on a small scale. And so I didn't ever think it would be this, but I knew I wanted to try. I knew I wanted to build something that was going to be sizable and meaningful. And so, um, but you know, I could have never predicted this. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it, as I said before, it's, you know, three years and, and such growth, you obviously hit on something, but I love the fact that you said you had the big vision from the beginning, from the like beginning. you were thinking big from, from the beginning. Um, it's like uh, Kara Golden, who is a friend of mine. She's the yeah. founder of Hint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I spoke, she spoke at one of my events and I talked to her on the phone and she said, Allison, I thought I was building a $1 billion company, but yeah. now I think I'm building a $2 billion company. And it was just a decision that she made. Yeah. And I, just, I think that's in a sense what you've done. So, um, so talking about... Um, everything that's happening right now in the world with COVID-19, uh -huh. have you had to make shifts? Has it been a detriment? Have opportunities open up? 
Uh, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> uh, um, yes to all the above. In the beginning, it was extraordinary because, um, you know, rest, um, uh, grocery stores have about six months to prepare for Thanksgiving, get everything on the shelf ready, order in all the food. Here, they had about six minutes to prepare for what was Thanksgiving times 10 when people were just rush the stores daily buying all the food. There was never a food supply problem. There was always a food distribution problem. And, you know, all of a sudden, what used to be very, you know, natural and getting point, food from point A to point B to point C just got 10 times more complicated. And there was innovation happening in real time every single day. In fact, it's still happening every single day. Um, and there was a lot of innovation happening around the company because now that we're working this way and virtually, we're starting to discover, oh, you know, we could actually do this better. And look, we just met this new partner and here's what they can do. And so it has start, it has caused us to pivot and innovate, which is fantastic. The other part is that, you know, we had 10 employees who were technically rendered inactive due to COVID because their jobs just couldn't be done anymore. People who were responsible for food shows or the truck or food service or things like that. So what we did, and I'm super proud of this fact, is that we gave them all new jobs. New jobs that we needed help with because of COVID and everything related. So those 10 people, not only are they still working and, you know, um, but they're busier than ever. And my favorite part is they're learning new skills. Wow. And that, that should chills. be the point, huh? That gave me chills. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'm super happy and proud of that. And, you know, I heard from one of them the other day, they just they love being able to learn something new every day, which by the way, I still learn something new every day. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's the exciting thing, right? About mm -hmm. living in general is, is learning. Yeah. And so, exactly. yeah, so that, that's great. And I think, you know, a lot of businesses are in that situation and not knowing what to do, but I think if you get creative, you know, if there's a need yeah. for that, then you yeah. can make that shift for them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. It, um, it's been remarkable to watch. It'll be interesting to see the innovation that's come out of this for your business, how it's going to change the way you do business in general moving forward. Oh, I, you know, I think in many ways it already has. I mean, the you know, we sell, you know, exponentially more on click and collect uh, on, you know, retailer.com sites. Um, uh, we're increasing our availability on e-commerce and, uh, so it, it definitely has shifted the way that we do business. You know, we don't really know how people's shopping habits are going to change, uh, yeah. once everybody goes back. So, um, you know, it's a lot of bets to make. Yeah. And what do you think that, um, because this has been challenging, obviously, for a lot of business owners and a lot of innovations coming out of it. What do you feel are, what do, what do business owners need to know to be able to stay resilient, you think, during tough times like this or in the future? Because we don't know economically what's, what's down the pipe. Yeah. You know what? It's so true. It, it's funny. Being, being a business owner and being resilient are pretty inextricable. And in some ways, I think when you are a small business, look, it's, there's so many small businesses that have been hurt, you know, drastically by this. And it pains me. It pains me uh, to see small businesses go out because they are the lifeblood of this, of this country. But there's also a lot that one of the benefits is they can pivot on a dime. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the benefits that Kali Power had is that we were so used to moving so fast. We were so used to growing so quickly. We were so used to making decisions and enacting upon them 15 minutes later that it actually served us really well. So in some ways, I think, you know, size obviously can hurt you. And there's a, a number of obviously companies that are being extremely hurt by that. But I think in many ways, 
using your malleability, your, your nimbleness uh, to your advantage is something that, you know, the big companies just don't have uh, and aren't able to do. And it's a wonderful way to pivot uh, in a, in a, in a very fast moving environment. Yeah. That was the word that came to be nimble when you were talking mm -hmm. about that and, yeah. and just the innovation and the flexibility together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's powerful. You know, in our in Pinnacle Global Network, where we mentor business owners, we really that's what we've been doing the last few months yeah. is helping them pivot. And, and out of that has been, you know, all these new revenue streams that won't just get them through this time, but are going to transform their business. Well, I beyond. love it. I love it. That's uh, such important work. Congratulations, really. Yeah, I love it. I love business like you do, too. And speaking of um, WeBank, which is, you know, what this, you know, we, WeBank is the one that is producing this show and, um, you know, such an amazing support to the woman business owner and minority business owner. Um, how have you utilized WeBank and your WeBank certification to support your growth and Kali Cal Power's growth? I would say two things. So one, there's been some really practical ways. Uh, I'll give you a, a great example. Because so many companies are making a conscious effort to, uh, particularly retailers, are making a conscious effort to increase the number of products by female-owned businesses, large retailers, uh, we have been able, thanks to the WeBank uh, certification, have been able to get a lot of those benefits. Um, sometimes you don't have to pay certain fees because you're a woman certified business. Sometimes you, if it's between you and someone else, maybe you'll get another slot on the shelf. Um, sometimes you get to go to uh, different events that retailers have because they're trying to promote women and diversity in their, um, in their uh, environment. So all of those things have been incredibly helpful, incredibly helpful. The other thing that I would say is, um, you know, I always say that there's only one way to see the world with more female owned businesses. So you always hear people saying, I want, you know, I'd love to see more female owned businesses. Well, if you really want to, there's really only one way to do that. And that is to support more female-owned businesses, to buy their products, to sign up for their newsletters, to share their, to, to be on their social, to share uh, their products online with your friends. And the only way, the only sort of connection point to all those women-owned businesses is an organization like WeBank who can help bring them all together. I try, we just, I just did an Instagram live the other night where I made a pizza and I tried to incorporate female owned businesses uh, that, you know, whether it was a sauce that I was putting on top or um, I made a dessert pizza and I used some ice cream from a, a wonderful female owned company. So there are things that we can all do, but that helps us stay connected to each other and to recognize all the different successful female owned businesses that we can then support. Oh, I love that. Thank you for bringing that out too, because that we are stronger together. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I love about WeBank is that that you know the women are supporting one another. Exactly. In, in exactly. This organization. And one hundred percent. Yeah, in so many ways, but also really like you know hiring other uh, WBEs and leaning on them for resources and support supporting one another. So I will tell you that Kali Power obviously has a female CEO. It also has a female CFO and a female COO. Oh wow. I love it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. And That's they're fantastic. they're great. Yeah, absolutely. Well very cool. So uh moving forward in the future, are there some new products or new projects that you're working on in the coming months that we're you know, that you well, we, yeah, well, the innovation never stops at Collie Power is what I like to say. So uh, we did, we have lots of products. We have our, obviously our pizzas are what made us famous, but we have sweet potatoes, which are bread replacement. We have tortillas. Uh, we launched our um, 
we launched chicken tenders coated in cauliflower, the healthiest chicken tender ever made. Those were launched uh, at the end of last year. And then just hitting stores in about a week or so, next couple of weeks is our brand new product, which is riced cauliflower in cups. So it's portable, microwavable, and they're flavored in flavors that have never been done. Beautiful ingredient lines um, and super easy to make. And um, so we're very excited about that. And uh, just in the spirit of thanking all your listeners, I have a code for free products for anybody who might, can I, can I say yes, that? Yes, please, please, please. Okay. So anybody who wants, anybody who's listening and wants a free product, all you have to do is text. I feel you had, I felt like you had a lot of female business owners um, out there. So I thought text boss, B-O-S-S -S, to 21688, 21688 text boss, B-O-S-S, -S, and we'll text you back a coupon for any free Cauliflower product. Fantastic. And we'll put that on our lower third oh, there. We'll edit that in there. Thank so you. 21, Excellent. 21688 boss. Uh, yeah. Text boss. All your boss. boss oh, women. I love it. I'm definitely, I cannot wait to try that. That is fantastic. And I know my husband is, will be totally into Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. So, wow, this has been super inspiring, Gail. I really thank you for taking the time and sharing your experience, your wisdom, uh, opening your heart, your home. <laughs> <laughs> whatever I have, you're welcome to. I thank you. There's not much left, but whatever there, you're, you're, you're welcome to. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. It's my favorite, uh, my favorite audience you have out there. So thank you. Good. Well, keep I, I, I hope they all know I'll be cheering them on. Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And so for those of you that are listening, if you haven't subscribed yet to the Women Who Own It podcast, run and do that now. You can do it on iTunes and on Spotify, anywhere that podcasts are found. And so that you get notice every time we have a new show and we have amazing women business owners like Gail that we are featuring so that you can continue to learn, grow, scale, and be inspired um, as the woman uh, who owns it like you are doing right now. So until next time, get out there, elevate yourself because you are worth it. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.